be reached out in the city of office hours. That's cool. Um, understand all that. If, if you are stopping by and you have to go for whatever reason or you come in late, this will be on our YouTube channel um, as well as the slide deck that I'll keep putting in the chat as more people come in, but it'll also be in that folder that we share out. Um, I think at the end of every week for, for the right now, we'll share out a link to each of those, but we'll also add that to a website we're trying to, to put out. So with that being said, Kate, you good to go? Yeah, I can't. Yep, I'm good. Okay. Um, so I know you've seen quite a few of these. Uh, we're still going to start out with some things to break the ice, I guess. Um, but if you ever watch Parks and Rec, um, this is one of our favorite characters, Ron Swanson. Um, and in one of the episodes, he's in a park about to butcher a hog. And um, basically, he gives he gives a park ranger um, a piece of paper that says, I can do what I want, because he's a libertarian. So this, this was going along with the coronavirus. Cop, why are you outside? The state is under lockdown. And we feel like Ron Swanson would do this to the authorities. If you've never watched Parks and Rec, I would highly suggest you use your time to watch it. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. Go. He's the best. The whole, the whole Get through the first five episodes and you'll love it. <laughs> yes. Um, Jimmy Fallon put out a hashtag uh, the other day. If you're not aware, you can go to Twitter and use the hashtag, I'm so bored I. Um, and there's a ton of really fun ones. So this one says, I'm so bored I hit a walkie talkie in the bushes in front of my house so I could scream at people when they go by and watch their reactions on my doorbell camera. No more TV needed. So there's a bunch of really fun ones and really uh, hilarious but not appropriate for school. So especially because we're recording. I shared one last night with Andy and he was like, no, no. <laughs> so um, this is a really good one. But there's a, there's a lot of other really good ones. So if you ever, you're bored today, I'm so bored I, hashtag. Okay, so one of the first things that we're gonna look at is uh, Flipgrid. And some of you may be familiar with Flipgrid, um, and some of you may not be. We're gonna go in and out of the slide deck. So I'm gonna show you a few features, and then I'm gonna go into my account. Um, so basically this, if you're not familiar with it, it's a video response tool for students. Um, but the thing that pe most people don't know is that they don't need to show their face. You don't need to show your face. There's a whiteboard and blackboard capability. You can have stickers, text, filters. Um, but then the nice thing is that peers can respond to each other um, and you can respond back to them. And then you also can have students responding via their computer, their phone, and their iPad. Um, I actually really prefer the phone over uh, the computer. I feel like it's more intuitive. So if they have a smartphone, then they're easily able to respond from their from their phone. So um, you would go through the educator login if you go to the website. And then um, I'm already logged in, but I would log in through Google. And so if you, like, these are all of my grids. So um, you'd want one grid per classroom. So, like, we have a Girls Who Code club. And so all of our topics go into the Girls Who Code grid. So, like, this one's the one, Penny for Your Thoughts, is a grid we use for PD. And so um, here are the different topics. And, um, like, we did True Truths and a Lie for our blended cohort. And I'll get with Google. So while Kate's doing that, a grid would be your class. A topic would be the activity or the, the yeah. question you're gonna put out. Um, I know with working people with people this year, it, that's still like a confusing idea. So grid is your class, topic is gonna be what you what you try to push out for for content. So we did two truths and a lie as like a warm up activity for our blended cohort at the elementary level. And so um, teachers were able to respond. Like you can see Caitlin didn't even show her face. She didn't want to and that's fine. So she um, she put the sun over her face or like Megan was fine with her face, but she wrote on it. Um, there's a blur option. There's just so many options for people to respond. Um, and then if you see, sorry, my mouse went crazy. If you see these little bubbles, so like this is Danny. And then there's two teacher bubbles next to her. That means that she got two responses from two different people within this grid. So like if you respond, if you have students respond, then other students can respond back to them. I'm gonna okay. hit this and see what happens. Go ahead. Okay, so while that's happening, um, this could be a really great way to do a check-in at the beginning or the end of the week with your, with your class to, I don't know, either get something funny, get something that, um, you want to know do do they know this do they have questions for that or whatever that is um and i know that like 
a fair amount of the kids have used this in some realm of of education by this point. Um, so you can start with something like that if you've never used it or you haven't gotten really into it. But you can get pretty deep in terms of I know that there's a couple people that are considering like a mock debate through it. Um, and you have to navigate through who has good internet and who doesn't with that. But um, there's a ton of different ways you can use it. Kate, go ahead and show the whiteboard. Yeah, so you can have students, and if they're on their Chromebook or their phone, they can write and explain, you know, like if I'm doing, if I'm doing a equation and I need to say how many solutions it has, my computer's being slow because we're recording right now. And I need to say, um, how many solutions there are, right? Like I can be talking through this as I'm writing my problem and then telling you and solving it and then saying that there's, you know, one solution or whatever. Um, so I can do that with a blackboard as well. I can, I can make it black instead of white. Um, and then as I'm recording, I can talk over it. So it'll hear my voice as I'm narrating the problem or whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, and I can even add text to explain, whoops, it went away. It's being slow. Either way, so that's an option. So there's a ton of things to do with Flipgrid as far as response tools. Um, so this is a link to the remote learning Flipgrid blog. So there are a ton of resources, like these resources that are opening up to us, or this one's always been open, but all of the resources have some type of remote learning and they are teaching teachers how to use them. So like there, it's being slow, but there's uh, a webinar and different things like starting points for teachers who have not used them. Um, or if you have used them, there's other ways to use them. So um, yeah, if you haven't done it, you'll create an account um, with Google or log in with Google and then create a grid. And so one grid per class, like Andy was saying, and then within your grid, your topics are each, each different post that kids might have. Um, and then really quick before we move on to the next one, the Disco Library is a really awesome thing. Like they're already created for you. So you just copy them over to your account. So um, if if I want to go to the Disco Library and I want, like I'm not sure exactly what I want, I can look at all through these. Like would you rather math? Let's say I pick this one. Even though I can search, it's going to take a minute, but I can search by subject um, and I can search by audience. Um, but it's slow because we're recording. So I'm just going to pick one that's already here. So would you rather put $3 in a bank and have it triple each week for four weeks or put $4 in a bank and have it quadruple each week for three weeks? And then they would have to explain their answer. So if I like this and I want this for my math class, then I just select a grid and then I can edit it. I don't have to keep it like this. So even if I'm going to add it, it's going to take me there. Would you rather math? I can edit all of the directions. I can change the amount of time. Ooh, 10 minutes. Um, that's new. That's new. Um, so, you know, I can edit all of it. But the Disco Library, the point of this, the Disco Library is there with already made topics. So you don't have to recreate the wheel. So that's a really nice feature that um, I think is forgotten about sometimes. Um, yeah, so this is when I search. I searched for math. And then I could choose high school or whatever grade level. Um, and then, you know, these different things come up within the, di the Disco library for you to use. And again, you just add them to a grid. You can edit them and you're ready to go. And I know there's some of us that are the varying degrees of what they've used with this. Um, so I would start with the Disco library, steal what you can find. So you're not recreating because you can add docs in there. You can, you can make that as long term and elaborate as you want to or very short term. Um, so staying on the idea of um, video and all those things. So many of us have reached out to see like, well, how do we record ourselves so that we can do some direct instruction? Like, do I have to use Hangouts and record it and then share that and send that? You can do that. That's an option. We really like Screencast. I really like Screencastify. Kate does as well, but there's other things she uses. But Screencastify goes directly with the Chromebooks. So this is also something that the kids can use, and they have direct availability to this now. So if you wanted them to do a video project or do something with that, they can absolutely do use Screencastify for you. You can record your your yourself. You can record your screen and go through X, Y, and Z, and then 
um, you can share it out either. So here is what it would look like screenshot wise. Um, Kate, I don't know if you have the extension up there, like on your computer. I don't, I don't. Do you want to okay. share? Uh, no big deal. Um, so the first one at the top there would be what that's going to look like. Um, and then down there is what would come up here. And so it would ask you, do you want to embed your webcam? You can choose not to. So you could just screen share your screen and um, it would show you nothing of your face. As we talked about earlier on, I think those touch points are super important. You're doing office hours, so they're able to see you. But even just having your um, having your face there when you're trying to do some of your videos um, is, is pretty helpful. But you can do just your webcam. You can do your browser tab and all of those different things. There's, an, there's a drawing tool that you can have with that um, that's a little bit newer. But um, yep, what's up, Kate? We have one question I just want to make sure. Um, uh, about the because of the coronavirus, all screen screencasting has opened up to about fifteen minutes, right? Is your limit? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It'll say five minutes, but it's opened up to fifteen. Um, same idea as everything else is opening up to. So screencastify is free throughout life. There's paid versions, but with the state education is in right now, they open that up. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, Kate, it'll then give you the option to record it, you do your recording and you stop. And then here's what will come up. So this automatically, if you've never used Screencastify, it will make a uh, folder in your Google Drive. And then you can edit it, do anything like that, or you can publish it right to YouTube. You can get the in embed code. Most of the things that Kate and I do now, what's that? Sorry, I moved to the next one. Uh, we, we published to YouTube. Um, so that's an option, or you can just have that in there and, and put it out however you want. The next two slides are some resources that you can have. So this is quite frankly pulled right from their website, but 50 ways that you can use Screencastify in the classroom. And it goes into if you were in a day-to-day -day life, but also then um, in a distance learning. And then the next one is is directly with, with Google Apps. Um, so they seem they sound like the same thing, but there is some varying differences uh, and it gets into you know, how you can use them with forms, all of the different things. All right, do um, you wanna go over this one? Yeah, so one of the things that uh, we keep hearing from teachers is that they would like to have a YouTube channel and they don't know how to create it. So, um, you know, actually everybody in the district has their own YouTube channel. Um, so you go to the waffle and when you go to your YouTube, um, so this is obviously going to be like your dashboard of like whatever you've watched in the past. Maybe I don't, I haven't watched all this. Um, but if you go to, um, sorry, this hamburger over here, which is the three lines next to the YouTube symbol, you have your videos and that is your channel. So any video that I've uploaded to, um, to YouTube is here. So this is my channel. Um, <clears throat> And this is how Andy and I are, um, he's uploading all of our videos to his channel and making a playlist for the PD things. Um, so if you have a video from Screencastify or whatever you may be using, um, all you have to do is hit this little camera, hit upload video, and then you can choose a video from your desktop or your file to upload. Um, it's going to be really slow, but I did make a screencast the other day that Andy embedded. So. Um, this is the video of how to upload your uh, your video to YouTube. The only thing I did not add that I forgot to add is that um, there's like a little blue line under every video, right, that we have to approve for the district. So, um, like, if you go, if, if nobody is, is um, go. go and click on that one. Oops. Go back. Oh, here it is. So in the bottom here is right, going to be a so blue. Whoop. If I go back into when it loads. I forgot to restart my computer. Andy. This, this, right. goes, this goes for anybody with any video, whether it's one that you upload or one that you find that you really want that would be good for instruction. The approved bar is going to be at the bottom there. In the old days, we would have to send something to technology and then cross our fingers 
as to timing and everybody seeing it, all of that. Now you can approve that and you can take that down later if you want to. So you can approve it now and eventually it'll show approve. And then you can remove it if you're done or you find something that you don't, you know, you only went out there for a period of time, you can do that as well. Yeah, so that's the only thing that is not in the video. So if you want to use your YouTube vid your YouTube channel and start utilizing that, it's a one, I, this is a screencast of how to do it and I just forgot the part, to put that part. So there you have it. Um, this is one of my favorite tools of all time, Actively Learn. And um, it's so expensive, but they've opened it up. So like when I went into my account, it said we've upgraded your free account to the premium version. Um, so right now you have access. If you go into Actively Learn, whether you had an account before or you've never had an account, you now have all of the features for Actively Learn. I'm so happy. I hope there's some English teachers on here um, because this is just an awesome tool. Um, so if you are familiar what, with what it is, you can use a text and you can embed videos. You can, um, you know, you can add these little blurbs as you're as you're having students go through the text. It's like basically a tool to help with close reading. You can annotate, you can have these definitions, you can respond to students um, or even put things in there to help them prompt. Um, you can, you know, obviously change this to Spanish. It's just there's so many things that you can do. Um, and so when I log in <clears throat> to my account, this is a screenshot, over here on the left are my classes. Now I Obviously, I am from the elementary. That's my background. So I have Google, I have um, integrated it with my Google Classrooms. Um, but you are also able to integrate it with Canvas. So they're the only two LMSs that they work with. They only they only integrate with Google Classroom and Canvas. So that's that's a really nice feature for you. Um, and then you can you know if you can go you can go into curriculum units. They have entire units for you. Um, you can look by genre, by theme, um, Lexile, grade level, whatever you want. It is absolutely amazing. I could talk forever on this. I did learn. Um, so just make sure that you get in real quick. Um, you know, once you're in, sign in. Can you remind me after this session to restart my computer? Okay. I did it last night. Okay, so I'm in. And um, obviously there's high interest articles, but then you can also do, this was not available to us free. So you can do this, um, like let's go 11th grade ELI. Um, there's just like this Great, Nosby, great Gatsby novels available. Um, oh, there's so many things, genres, you can look by genre. Um, you can import, like with the free version, you could only do three imports. So I have um, PDFs in here that I was able to embed things to. And But now that it's the premium version, I can upload as many as I want. So this is just a really cool tool I could talk forever about, but we're going to run out of time. So I'm going to keep going. But just know that it's available. Like everything's opened up for you. Um, and then they also have a blog, which is really cool because... Like this one's creating a social studies curriculum that connects students to history and today's world, which I know is a big push in the social studies world. Like once I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's totally Amberman. And then, um, so that's hyperlinked to there. And then how can students work together in a mixed ability classroom, which is pretty crazy to think about that teachers are, you know, not only were you, you know, kind of teaching mixed abilities in the classroom, but now that we are online, there's mixed abilities, both content wise and like, um, the ability in like technology wise. So now there's just even more barriers. So I thought that might be a nice one. But if you go to this, it's hyperlinked and the entire blog is available. Um, and then if you're interested, there's a remote learning blog, which is this orange. This is linked to the remote learning blog. But I took a screenshot of just this part because there's a free webinar. Um, the March 30th one has already passed, but it's going all the way till Friday. Um, I think every day at noon. So you just have to, you can you can sign up for that if you'd like. Um, so Adobe Spark is also um, a really awesome tool, but it's it's more for like creating graphics, videos, and web pages. Um, and then this is like what your what your thing looks like when you're trying to create. So um, you can add all of these things, and some of the things that were once locked are no longer locked. So that's that's a really nice feature. Um, you can change your templates. Like this was a, I think a Twitter quote. You can borrow their templates, their designs, colors, all of these really awesome things. And then um, 
another to Adobe Spark is Canva. And this one's my absolute favorite. It has way more templates. It doesn't have the ability to make video because this one does have, you can, you can have almost like an iMovie type of video. It doesn't have as much as iMovie, but it's free and students can create videos and movies. Um, but Canva doesn't have the ability to do movies and web pages, but they have a lot of temp templates for like infographics, flyers, certs, worksheets, and posters. And I know worksheets are not um, a wonderful thing. You know, it's kind of a bad word to, in today's education, but you can really make a worksheet uh, have all the learning components of the learning cycle within one document if you construct it um, strategically. So I thought that would be a nice little way, uh, nice little template to include. Um, and again, you can remix them. They, you don't have to keep them the way that they are. So, so these two would be really good for um, you know different ways of of having the kids show their understanding of the content. Um, for you, different ways for you as a teacher to be able to push out different things if it's something you're into. But definitely you could have the kids um, be able to show through an infographic if you're doing anything social studies, you could do um, with political cartoons, you know, those some of those different things. Um, they can even make memes. What, what's that? They can even make memes. Right, right. And that I mean that shows understanding of learning. Yeah. Break the, the monotony of everyday life. Okay, so we'll go quickly over these next two because we're going to run out of time. Um, if you haven't heard of Kami, so Kami is um, an extension that you can use right with Google. It is a, it's been used, it's been approved um, through through the district. Everything we have in here has been used at different points. Um, but Kami is a good annotation tool. There's a there's a couple of different ways. There's a cool video I watched last night. It's floating out how to take a PDF into a Google Doc. Um, but Kami, what it does is it connects directly to your Google Drive. And so if I pushed out a PDF and I want you to either annotate it or I want you to give feedback, I want you to fill out whatever it is in there, it provides that option for you to be able to do so. And then whenever the, so the kids do that, they can then turn in whatever that work is or show that if you wanted to take a PDF of X, Y, and Z for instruction, and show that out. You could then put your notes in there, and that could be something that gets sent out to the to the kids as as notes or or whatever that is. Gammy's super easy. It's super quick. Um, so that's an area there. If you if you have trouble with it, reach out to us. Um, I know that like Andy Warren definitely used it with his with his history classroom this year. Um, a couple others. So please please do. And the last one. Um, is quizzes. So, Kate, do you want to open up your quizzes while I talk? Yep. Okay. So, quizzes. If you if if you've never used it, it's it's a it's another type of um, question answer tool that can be used either in the classroom or can be used in distance learning. Um, and then while I know we are not doing grades or on hold doing grades, all of that ambiguity right now. Um, this is where you can get feedback to in a, in a more of a playful way of what the kids know. Um, that's different than a quiz on a test on Canvas or, or anything like that. So there's a lot of different templates that you can steal from. And what I like about quizzes is it gives you like the, the opportunity, if you take it, to redeem yourself if you miss a question. It gives you the option. Like whenever you get something right, it puts out some funny memes and, and things like that um, that can can break the monotony of everyday life and it's super easy to create. So Kate is gonna show what are you showing me, Kate? A math one. Well, I'm just gonna show that like you can pick these and you can save them and you can edit them. So like just again, like most things, if you pick it, it doesn't mean that you have to keep it packaged as it is so that you can you can edit it. So you can create from scratch or you can you can see what is available on there. Um, and when you, you push it out, you can assign it as homework, you can you know you can play it live. Um, so, like, if we're looking at things right now of, of life, like, it can be assigned that way to host a game. You can push it out as just practice. You can push it out as a quiz. A number of different things. Um, and this is the solo option. Right, right. Instead um, of hosting a game. And that also integrates with Canvas. Um, it's one of, the, one of the fewer ones it does. So, with all of that being said, 
because we like to keep it a half an hour and under. Um, this is part one. We'll probably push out a part two sometime next week um, for those that are interested. And what we tried to do is look at it. Here are some response tools. Here's some video idea, you know, video things that you can, you can have your kids do or for you to use um, and try to push out content. Um, you know, here are some ideas for creation. Here's some ideas in a way you can get uh, feedback through actively learn and stuff like that and quizzes. Um, so we try to keep give you enough to be dangerous, but but not overload the system. Any questions that you have? Hopefully this was helpful. Yeah, hopefully this was helpful. <laughs> it's like a speed dating kind of thing, right? It's like rush through them all. We originally didn't want to have this many, but I know everybody's trying to frantically prepare for next week and the weeks beyond. So if you could take one, one thing away, that would be success for us. Wow, good. There's an English teacher on. Yay. Thank you, guys. Take care. Have a good day. Thank you, too. When's our next one? 10.30. Okay. How do you think that went? Give me one second here.